Okay, let's take a look at this problem. There's a problem that we're going to be using the normal tangential and binormal coordinate axes uh, to solve. It's pretty straightforward. It's very similar to one that we solved in class with a jet. But let's just get some practice here. So here we have a toboggan traveling down a curve. It's approximated by that parabola y is equal to 0.01x squared. At the given moment shown, the velocity is 10 meters per second down the slope itself. And the rate at which the speed is increasing is 3 meters per second squared. So all of that information is provided for us. And I'm just going to highlight some of those important things. So the speed is 10 meters per second. That is the magnitude of the velocity. And the rate at which the speed is changing, v dot a, is 3 meters per second squared. So I look at this problem, and I recognize that these individuals are traveling down a slope. And although we could use, technically, any coordinate system that we choose, I recognize that they're essentially going around a curve here. And on a curved path, the two best options are your cylindrical coordinates or your normal tang tangential and binormal coordinates. So I'm going to choose to use my normal and tangential binormal coordinates. And I recognize that we always point the normal unit vector towards the center of curvature, and we always point the tangential unit vector in the direction of the velocity. So in this case, I recognize that the two individuals are traveling down the slope, so that tangential coordinate must be pointing down the slope. It's tangent to that curve, which is why we give it that name, tangential. OK, once you decide what coordinate system you're going to be working in, it's always helpful to write out the position, velocity, and acceleration for that given set of coordinates. So we're using the normal, tangential, and binormal system. In this scenario, the binormal direction, which it would be coming out of the board in this case, um, doesn't factor in. So we're not going to have to consider any binormal component. However, the normal and tangential, we do have to worry about. So first things first, let's write out our position according to our normal, tangential, and binormal. It's actually very simple. Because the normal, tangential, and binormal set of axes follow the object as it moves through space, there is no such thing as a position vector in this set of coordinates. Our velocity is not too difficult either. The velocity vector is simply the magnitude of your velocity, which we know is our speed. And the direction of the velocity is always pointing in the tangential direction. That's how we define the tangential direction. We said that it's in the direction that the object is moving. And in this case, it's down and to the left on our diagram. And last but not least, we have an acceleration that we've developed in class for our NTV set of coordinates. The acceleration in this case has two components. It has one component in the tangential direction, which is the magnitude of the velocity with respect to time, the change in speed with respect to time. And this points in our tangential direction. And there's another component, which is called the sin. Uh, centripetal acceleration, or our normal acceleration, which is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius of curvature rho, in this case. So the question here is asking us to determine the magnitude of the acceleration. When it's all said and done, we should find the magnitude of the acceleration. And when we look here, this is the equation that we're going to be solving for. In order to find the magnitude of any vector, you take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of that vector. So we'll need to be able to determine v dot, and we'll need to be able to determine v squared over rho. More generally, we can refer to v dot as the acceleration in the tangential direction, and we can refer to v squared over rho as the acceleration in the normal direction. Okay? 
These are one and the same. Okay, so how do we proceed? Well, let's start circling all those values that we know right offhand. The problem gives us V dot. It tells us 3 meters per second squared is V dot. So that value is known. It also tells us the speed at which the boys are traveling on the toboggan down the hill. At that given moment, they're traveling at 10 meters per second. The only unknown in this problem is rho. We need to determine the magnitude of A, so that means we need to know the components of A. V dot is one component. V squared over rho is our other component. We don't know rho. That's really all that we're after. So we developed an equation in class, or we talked about this equation rather, that the radius of curvature rho is equal to this seemingly messy combination of terms, 1 plus the quantity dy dx squared, all of that to the three halves, divided by the second derivative of y with respect to x. So in order for us to find rho, we will need to be able to find, we'll need to have to find dy dx, d squared y, dx squared. This isn't all that difficult because we're given the equation describing the path on which these two individuals are traveling down the road or down the slope. We know that y is equal to 0.01x squared dy dx, therefore, is 0.02x. And our second derivative, d squared y dx squared, is equal to 0.02. Now I'm going to go to a new page. And I'm going to fill in for rho, those values for dy dx and d squared y dx squared. When I do that, I get 1 plus 0.02x, that's squared, all of this is to the 3 halves, divided by 0.02. This is an equation, isn't it? It tells us that the radius of curvature is a function of the x position. Depending on what position we put in for x, the radius of curvature is going to change. Okay? If we were to put 0 in for x, that would give us a certain radius of curvature. If we were to put 100 in for x, that would give us a different radius of curvature. So at what location are we interested in? Well, the problem reads that we want to determine the magnitude of acceleration at that given moment at A, and at that given point, the x-coordinate for A is 60 meters. So rho at 60 meters is going to equal 1 plus 0 0.02 times 60 squared to the 3 halves divided by 0 0.02. 0, 0.02. Rho turns out to be 190 meters. So now we know rho. And if we go back to the previous page, we knew what v dot was. We knew what v was. Now we know what rho is. We can construct our acceleration vector. And once we construct our acceleration vector, we can determine the magnitude of that vector, which is what the problem was asking for us to solve for this entire time. So our acceleration vector now becomes v dot 3 meters per second squared, and this is in the tangential direction, plus v squared over rho at that given moment the speed of those boys is 10 meters per second. We square that, divided by our radius of curvature, which is what we just solved for, 190 meters. 
and that points in the normal direction. Let's draw these directions one more time. This is our tangential, and what I'm drawing now is our normal direction. Our normal points up and to the left, tangential points downwards. This first term here, 3, represents the magnitude of the acceleration in the tangential direction. It's a positive number, so the acceleration must be pointing along the positive tangential direction. 10 squared becomes 100 divided by 190. All of this in the second term, the magnitude of the acceleration in the normal direction is also positive. So it must be pointing along the positive unit normal direction. If either of these two quantities were negative, that would mean it would indicate that the acceleration was pointing in the opposite direction. When we simplify, our acceleration is equal to 3ut plus 0 0.525 in the normal direction. This is in meters per second squared. Notice that above 10 meters per second, when we square that, becomes 100 meters squared per second squared. And when we divide by 190 meters, the units become meters per second squared. The magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares. 3 squared plus 0 0.525 squared, plug this into our calculators, we get 3.05 meters per second squared. What direction is this total acceleration pointing in? Well, if we go back to our diagram here and we use our parallelogram method, we can find that our acceleration sort of pointing off at an angle in between the normal and tangential directions. Now, the way I drew it is a bit misleading because we find out that the acceleration in the normal direction is much less than the acceleration in the tangential direction. So this arrow ought to really be pointing down here more. But even so, the point is still made that the acceleration is shared between the tangential direction and the normal direction.